Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. India's PM Modi lashes opposition as Adani allegations persist. Pakistani space fuel rationing amid crisis. Minister warns against hoarding. And thousands in Sri Lanka protest against huge increase in income tax. And now for all the details, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday lashed out at the opposition as he spoke in the parliament amid loud chanting by the opposition lawmakers demanding an investigation into the allegations against the Adani group while accusing his government of giving undue favours to billionaire Gautam Adani. PM Modi said their sloganeering was habitual and no matter how much mud they sling, the lotus will keep blooming. Referring to his party's poll symbol, the lotus flower. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday lashed the opposition parties as he spoke in the upper house of parliament amid loud chanting and heckling by the opposition lawmakers, demanding an investigation into the allegations by a US short seller firm against the Adani group of stock manipulation and misuse of tax havens. Modi in his speech mainly listed government's achievements and without naming the under fire Adani group said, sloganeering by opposition lawmakers was habitual and added that no matter how much mud you sling, the lotus will keep blooming, referring to his party's poll symbol, the lotus flower. He said the main opposition Congress party never tried to solve permanent problems of the country. That is why public is continuously closing opposition's accounts and they are taking out that frustration here. <laughs> Sporadic protests have taken place in parts of the country as opposition parties demand investigations by a joint parliamentary committee or a Supreme Court appointed panel into the allegations made against the conglomerate. Opposition parties see the affair as an opportunity to corner Modi, who is eyeing a third term in elections next year. The short selling attack and shelving of the share sale have tarnished Adani's reputation and triggered a rout in its talks in recent days. The group has denied the claims in daily rebuttals. The government and the business group have both denied over close ties. And a sixth Indian aircraft reached Turkey on Thursday as part of India's Operation Dost, which has been launched to provide assistance in relief and rescue efforts in both quick-hit Turkey and Syria. The two Middle Eastern countries have witnessed multiple earthquakes this week, with the death toll surpassing 15,000. The sixth flight from India carrying personnel of National Disaster Response Force, Dog Scots, essential search and access equipment, medicines and medical equipment reached quick hit Turkey early on Thursday, India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar informed on Twitter. He also informed about a field hospital set up by the Indian Army in Hathi of Turkey for earthquake victims. India's Junior Foreign Minister V. Murli Dharan on Wednesday night along with Turkey's envoy to India interacted with the rescue team and flight crew of India's C-70 Globemaster before they departed for relief efforts. Murli Dharan told reporters that India would assess the situation and will do the needful if any further assistance is required. India has launched Operation Dost for relief efforts in both Turkey and neighbouring Syria. Uh, operation Dost uh, is a very important operation and uh, this is the operation of friendship. Because Dost is a word in Hindi and Turkish which means friends. And this operation shows our friendship between India and Turkey. And friends always help each other. Pakistan, a key ally of Turkey, has also sent in emergency aid and rescue teams to the crisis-hit nation along with Arab countries in the region.
Turkey and Syria have witnessed multiple earthquakes ranging from magnitude 7.5 since Monday, with death toll surpassing 15,000 in both countries as of Thursday. The tremors are the Turkey's deadliest since a tremor of similar magnitude in 1999 devastated the heavily populated eastern Marmara Sea region near Istanbul, killing more than 17,000. Well, low fuel supply has increased problems of Pakistanis as they continue to struggle under the ongoing economic crisis. People have complained petrol dealers have started rationing the fuel. The Pakistan government has warned if petrol companies will hoard fuel, they will face serious actions. A report. A crisis of low fuel supply at filling stations has increased the problems of common Pakistanis as they struggle with high inflation under the ongoing economic crisis. Motorists on Wednesday complained of fuel rationing measures taken by petrol stations which have forced them to find fuel for their vehicles from pillar to post. However, Petrol Dealers Association in Pakistan has maintained shortage is not from the dealers but from oil companies who have not sent enough supply leading to shortage. While the government is processing letter of credit to increase fuel import, countries' low foreign exchange reserves and artificial curbs remain a hindrance in importing the fuel, media reports suggest. <laughs> However, Pakistan's junior minister for petroleum has said the country had enough fuel to last at least 20 days in line with regulatory requirements and any consumer shortages were due to stockpiling by oil marketing companies. He added that the government is not planning to hike fuel prices and warned oil companies against stockpiling of petrol. इसको तंबी जानिए आप यह बंद नहीं कर पाएंगे आप जखीरा अंदोजी नहीं कर पाएंगे आप लोगों के हक पर डाका नहीं डाल पाएंगे यह हमारा रिजॉल्व है और अगर आप करेंगे तो आपको इसको बड़े सख्त कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस बैर करने पड़ेंगे हम आपके लाइसेंसेस मंसूख कर देंगे Cash Trapped Pakistan is currently negotiating a program with the International Monetary Fund and raised fuel prices by 15% prior last month, shortly before talks with an IMF delegation visiting Islamabad. Inflation in the country is running at a multi-decade high of 27.6%, with Pakistan facing a balance of payments crisis. The plummeting value of the Pakistani rupee is also pushing up the price of imported goods. Moving on, months after floods hit Gilgit Baltistan, victims still await rehabilitation and aid from the Pakistani government. Residents of Goro Jaglot area recently held a press conference in the hope their voices will reach concerned authorities as they accused their rulers have turned a blind eye to their problems. Misery of people of Gilgit Baltistan does not seem to end. Months after the illegally occupied territory suffered unprecedented flooding after melting of glaciers, which devastated huge swathes of land and displaced hundreds, apart from killing several. Residents of Goro Jaglot area recently held a press conference to raise their concerns and accuse the Pakistan government and local authorities that they have turned a blind eye to their problems, with no aid or rehabilitation efforts done so far. They said people across the region have been dependent on the aid from humanitarian organizations, with the local administration remaining negligent towards them. In जितने भी पांच छह माह गुजर चुके हैं यहाँ पे जनी अजीत और कैफियत से गुजर रहे हैं इतनी हजार कनाल जमीन से जायद जो है वो दरिया के नजर हो गई है घर पे लोग बेगार हो चुके हैं अब तक इंतजामिया के जानिब से बजाय इनको बहाली करने के किसी किस्म का काम नहीं हुआ तो अब हम यहाँ पे आपका प्लेटफॉर्म इसलिए इस्ते� they accuse Pakistan, which rules the region through a proxy, does not grant the locals any political rights and representation, but exploits the region and its resources. 
The U.S. representative for U.N. management and reform, Chris Liu, has criticized the Taliban-imposed ban on Afghan women's education and employment as they still face challenges living a normal life in Afghanistan. Liu in a statement said that equal access to education and work is an essential component for the vitality and resiliency of populations. Amid widespread concerns about the issue of women in Afghanistan, the U.S. representative for U.N. management and reform, Ambassador Chris Liu, criticized the Islamic Emirates' recent decrees banning women's employment and education in Afghanistan. Liu in a statement said that equal access to education and work is an essential component for the vitality and resiliency of populations, including all young adults and children, regardless of gender. He further added that Washington condemns the strongest terms of the Taliban's edicts that ban women from universities and from working for NGOs on top of an existing ban on girls from secondary education. Many aid groups have partially suspended operations in recent weeks due to a Taliban ruling stating that most female NGO workers could not work, leaving agencies unable to operate many programs in the conservative country. No foreign government has formally recognized the Taliban administration since it seized power in 2021, especially over the rights of women. Amid sanctions and frozen assets, banking, business and development have continued to remain hampered in the country. And in news from Sri Lanka, scores of workers in Sri Lanka on Wednesday gathered across the capital city of Colombo to protest against the recent rise in taxes amid high inflation. As part of efforts to get funds from the IMF, the government has introduced new income taxes for professionals, ranging from 12.5% to more than 36%. Thousands of workers in crisis at Sri Lanka, led by nearly 40 trade unions of essential services, gathered across capital Colombo on Wednesday to protest against the recent rise in taxes amid high inflation. Sri Lanka, which needs to raise taxes to boost government revenue to 11.3% of GDP this year from 8.3% in 2022 in order to get funds from IMF, the International Monetary Fund, introduced new income taxes in January for professionals, ranging from 12.5% to more than 36%. Public workers shouting slogans with some carrying black flags and signs reading, yes to reasonable tax, stepped out of government buildings to protest. Black flags were also tied to railings outside Colombo's main hospital. <laughs> President Ranil Vikramasinghe, who took office last July after Gotabaya Rajapaksa was ousted in a popular uprising, told Parliament on Wednesday that he could see a way out of the troubles as he worked through economic reforms to seal the deal with the IMF for 2.9 billion USD bailout. And a transgender couple in southern India's Kerala state on Wednesday gave birth to a baby whose gender was not disclosed, marking a new milestone for the country. The couple had been at different stages of their respective gender transition processes when they decided to have a baby. A report. Indian transgender couple Zia Pawal and Zahad from Kozikode in India's southern Kerala state gave birth to a baby whose gender was not disclosed on Wednesday, marking a new milestone for the country. Pawal was born a male and was undergoing a sex change to become a female, whereas Zahad, who made history as India's first trans man who was pregnant, was born a female and was under therapy to become a male. But they had both stopped the procedure after receiving the news of conceiving the baby. Pawal 
In a historic verdict in 2018, India's top court decriminalized homosexuality by scrapping a colonial era ban on gay sex. But same sex marriage still remains illegal in the country. Despite the 2018 ruling, members of India's LGBT, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community complain about a lack of acceptance and discrimination against gay people in Indian society. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebookcom Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.